to turn to the crowd. Is, does anyone have a question they'd like to put? Or a point they'd like to make? I, I feel that the slow travel is, to a certain extent, linked in to our attitudes towards economic growth. But until actually we get a world whereby people are no longer so obsessed with economic growth, slow travel is never really going to take off. I mean, you, know, you mentioned about Ryanair and EasyJet. You know, they have to keep keep growing their profits. You know, until they can actually see, see some other way of organising their business, then that's not going to change. And I just wonder whether you've got any views on on the, the linkage between slow travel. Well, I, 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 think you're, I think you're right, uh, probably. I mean, um, yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, of course, the, the general paradigm is, is that we have to keep growing. And, and you know, the, as you say, the, 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 the rise of these budget airlines and things is, is linked to that. And you know, I'm sure that you know, their arguments are much more likely to be heard by people in power than the arguments of people like us, you know, because they can say they, they're benefiting the local economy. And actually, right now, get paid, they get gets subsidised, don't they, by regional sort of agencies all over Europe. You know, and so, so, I mean, obviously all those, you know, it's not just in this country, in many countries all over the world, it's seen as a good thing, but, you know, people should be, you know, you know whizzing about from here to Algeria. And it, it's, I mean, I mean, you're, I'm realistic, I, I think that's a, a sort of mindset which is very deeply embedded. Um, and I don't see, I mean, when I'm being you know, realistic. I don't see much immediate prospect of it changing. I mean, I mean, I don't think Gordon Brown is the kind of character who's going to bring that kind of change. He, he really only seems to believe in sort of endless work, and uh, I don't know what else. That, that's the only value. When he's asked about values, he just talks about hard work. <laughs> and I, I feel that that includes sort of you know this kind of growth, and it doesn't include slowing down. So I'm afraid we're governed by people who who don't really share these these sort of views, and and so it's it's not going to happen overnight, but I mean, I, and unfortunately it may take some terrible catastrophe uh, to, to bring about change. Well, per perhaps the credit crunch and the recession is the harbinger of that, maybe? One of these almost adolescent in that respect is the fact that we've actually create we have actually created enough wealth, you know, the, the big point here is about if we wanted to slow down, uh, all work a little bit less, maybe earn a little bit less, but have a bit more free time, quality time, you know, do a four day week, increase employment, you know, all of these things can be solved by doing actually a little bit of wealth transfer mm -hmm. and, and, and shifting a bit <coughs> around. Um, because we actually have enough, it's just uh, a bit top-loaded. I can that suggest that there would be a role for a company, or indeed quite a lot of companies, who spent their time identifying those places like Ireland, which at the moment could, could do housing, which could do with some uh, tourism, and plotting out how to get there by train and boat and putting it up on a, on a website, mm. so that there would be a website that people knew about and they could go to it. And that would be a very well, useful function. I think. One, one of my favourite folk heroes is the man in seat 61. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, people haven't seen his website, I'm sure half the audience here have. Um, but you know, <coughs> what Mark Smith has done is you know, he's managed to do what most of the mainstream travel industry has fundamentally failed to do, which is actually make uh, finding out how to get places by train and by sea relatively simple and accessible ask you to give maybe one or two fast tips on how to travel slowly, <laughs> even just one tip. <laughs> what would be, uh, for, for people in this room, none of whom have given up air travel, for instance, so I, I know you would want to start off by saying don't fly, but you could, that could be a tip too. Uh, well, maybe I'm, another, just to sort of, maybe a, a gentler start. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I do, I do think trying to seek out the, the brilliant things underneath our own noses is actually a, a hugely important thing, whether it's about you know, the, the unexplored parts of London. You know, I, I'm, I'm willing to wager that all of us, if we're all based in London, have, have still got hundreds of secrets we have not yet discovered in this incredible city in which we live. Um, then there's just the diversity of Britain, which you know, has almost a pornographically diverse landscape. And uh, my big thing is you know, the return of the airship. And, if, if we get this right, we'll be in New York in 48 hours. And, and I think that kind of notion of a two day crossing the Atlantic on an airship would be very desirable and romantic and pleasurable. And I, I, so I went up in an airship over London last summer uh, and was sponsored by Stella Artois, which was uh, <laughs> quite fun. You know, people might have seen the blimp going around. But it was an incredible sensation 
because we're so used to the sort of raw and brutal thrust of a jet. I was just thinking about boats, actually, and um, I just remember when I went sailing not, not long ago, I, I, was, I was so struck by the incredible beauty, really, of the movement of a, of a, of a sailing boat through the water, um, because this, this was a boat, actually a boat which also had an engine, and so uh, there was a huge difference between the experience of travelling when, when it was travelling with the engine, which is, which is quite brutal, actually, it just goes through things, you know, and, and, but when you're, you know, powered by the wind, it's an, it's an amazing feeling, you know, and it's also, I, I actually tried to take the helm, I was trying some, and the lining the ship in the right way, and the boat and the sails, and, you know, just being drawn through the water by, by wind. Uh, is a wonderful feeling, and, I, and that and that can stand for other things. I mean, actually, these ways of travelling are fantastically sensuous and, enjoy and enjoyable in a way that you know Ryanair and EasyJet are not. Mm, yes, final dig at Ryanair and EasyJet. <laughs> a, good, a good way to end off a, an evening devoted to the joys and pleasures of, of slow travel. Uh, I started off this evening quoting Mae West, who talked about how anything worth doing is worth doing slowly, and I think after. This evening's event, it's pretty clear that travel falls into that category. So I, I hope you will all go away with something to think about and that you will all travel a little more slowly in the future. Uh, I'd like to, you to join me in thanking our wonderful guests, Ed Gillespie and uh,